Hi guys, it's me Karen, and I've come to show you something I went out and bought myself. <laughs> I went and splurged, and I got myself this set of 84 Neocolor 2 water-soluble crayons. <laughs> These are absolutely gorgeous. I mean, I had a set that I was trying out. This little teeny tiny set. Uh, well, I don't call it teeny tiny, but I mean, it was a set of 15. I purchased these, I'm going to say about eight years ago. Um, I do cards. I don't really put those on my channel, but if you go down on my Instagram, you can see all the, you have to go down far though, <laughs> all the other things that I do. And I was doing some cards with some backgrounds with the um, set of 15 Nino colors. But I didn't really like how they were going into some of the coloring books that I tried them out on. And tried them again. And like I did a couple of videos back, the backgrounds that I followed a tutorial from Always Coloring Katrina. She made it so easy for me to try to follow her video and I actually used the um, blue colors that I had in here with a little bit of purple but you can tell the uh, range here isn't um, terribly big I mean there's two greens and like one pink <laughs> a couple of browns one black and um, maybe a couple of oranges that's a reddish color one yellow I wasn't going to get terribly many backgrounds or work out of this set. So I went and purchased the bigger set. You'll notice the logos are different. This is their new logo on this tin here. And that's the old one. So I thought if I could use a few more colors, I would go ahead and splurge. They're not exactly cheap. They come in a beautiful um, tin. This is where they're going to be housed because this comes in a nice little tin too and they just come out so easily. They fit in really nice to go together like this. I went ahead and I so watched them all out in my little book here. You can see the whole thing. And I, then I went in and put them in this order because I use this book as my swatch book for my water solubles and I want them in, them in the same order so when I go to pick a color I know exactly where to get them. This is the bottom um, rack and this is the top up here. So when I put them in order it just goes like this which is kind of cool. And I just thought that they turn out so beautiful. I mean, even the white shows up on this paper. We have a beautiful range of the grays, and there's a few over in this area too. And then we have the um, yellows kind of going down into the uh, yellowish ochre colors. And then you have the uh, reddish orange colors going down into reds into pinks to purples. I mean look at the range you get in this set is wonderful. I have the um, I mean that indigo is awesome but I fell in love with uh, this Persian blue and I love this green and <laughs> they just pretty pretty colors. Even the metallics I don't have um, my overhead light on but you can tell from the side light, you get a metallic sheen. Now what I did was I colored the crayon here really um, dark and then I used water right in the middle and then pulled the color across. So where I used a little bit of water you get the sheen and then it disperses out and you don't um, see it except for with your eye. You can't catch it on camera but you can see a little bit of it. So if you put it down and then just use a little water on it, you will get that pretty look, which I thought was neat. We have some very interesting shades over here. If you're wondering why the reds are in this order, it, it has to do with a set of 10 and then the um, primaries 
on this side in this book <laughs> this is just i mean it's 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 beautiful the only thing i would really like this aubergine is gorgeous is a wine colored red which i don't see in this um i could mix it but i, I would like one that was wine colored and i have all the pinks to go with the uh purples i would like the wine color to go with the other colors i've got all the blues i need i've got all the greens i need so if anybody knows of a wine color that comes in this set and a place to get it <laughs> could you leave me a link down below in the video i would really appreciate it in the comic section i should say so what i was going to do i'm hoping a background in this book I thought about this page and starting it off in kind of a browns and reds and then coming in as a cream color kind of an autumn look because this would be done in autumn colors browns and reds and um, probably some greens but I want the background closer in here in a creamy color, but outward going into the um, dark uh, oranges, reds, and browns. So, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and put the camera down, and we're going to play a little bit. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, what I've done is gotten out some colors. I've got pale yellow, flesh, saffron crimson and this one's a hard one for me to pronounce alizarian hue <laughs> it's, it's the darkest reddish color i have and the um, bird sienna and we are going to put them in sort of an order here i kind of want the creamy yellow so i'm going to do this section just down here and i will get the rest of it done off camera but i wanted to try this out so this is the pale yellow which is a nice creamy yellow and i'm just going to scribble it in here and a little out here I'll skip that part. I'm just going to come down here. Okay. Bring in the flesh. And I'm going to be putting it in kind of on top of that color. Just to get it some blending. Okay, I'm going to bring in some of the saffron. Bring in some of the Crimson Alizarian. You can tell it's a reddish tone. Just kind of bring it in here and there. Just kind of scribbling on the page. Okay, and then our Burnt Sienna, which is our brown. pretty dark out here. I have a paper underneath it, so <laughs> I won't have too much trouble, I hope. And then we're going to get a rag so I can wipe anything off my brush that I don't want in here. And we're going to go ahead and start up here on the pale yellow and just kind of 
we mix it in there. And then we'll kind of dab it around with our finger. Then we'll come down here. We'll start mixing in some of the um, flesh tone here. down into the saffron, which is a gorgeous color. down into take a little of that up there the reddish area And into the brown. And there we go. Bring up some more of that color in here. Don't want it too close to the leaves because the leaves are going to be um, kind of fall colors too. that dry. I think that turned out pretty cool. I may put a little bit of this um, flesh up here just to kind of give it a shadow look up there. That'd be cool. And I may use some Distress Ink just to darken this corner. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and uh, get the rest of that done, and I will show you what um, it all looks like. Okay, guys, that is all dry now. And I did go in with um, a little bit of my Walnut Stain Distress Ink and just went around the edges. Um, didn't bring it in anywhere, just did the edges on this. And that is our background, which I think will look really good with the fall colors that are going to be done on this page. Um, kind of brown tones on the mushrooms and the acorns with uh, dark either red or reddish brown tops. The framework on this is going to be done in black and the gems will be done in kind of the fall colors also along with the leaves. But that's another video. <laughs> So, I just wanted to pop in and play with some goodies. These are really fun. Like I said, I started off with the 15 set, and, you know, I kept that going for a few years. 
if you wanted to try them out without diving in for the big expense of the big set, which I am going to enjoy. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you have a wonderful day. If you would like to subscribe, like my videos, that would be really great. And if you want to ring the bell, you get notifications for the next video I have up. Thanks for watching, guys, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye now.